Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors. The national anthem will be performed by the Van Horn Varsity Concert Choir. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Present oath. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order oath. <coughs> Post the colors. Now, face. Sugar Creek Police Department Chaplain Donna Hoover will now deliver the invocation.
Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, once again, we have gathered to remember those who we vowed that we would never forget. Those from the Independence Police Department and the Sugar Creek Police Department that have paid the ultimate price for protecting our cities. This year it is spatially meaningful because we nearly lost another. So dear God, we ask that you be present with us as we remember today. And we ask for a calm, a peace, a healing, and a strength, the kind that comes only from you. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to the 2017 Independence and Sugar Creek, Missouri Police Department's memorial service. This service would not be possible without the tremendous efforts of so many. The planning for this event starts in February each year, and each year its success is due to the dedication of these individuals. I would like to personally thank the following, without whom today would not have been possible. Officers Billy Pope and Luis Virgil and the Volunteers and Police Service Unit, the Independence Fraternal Order of Police Lodge Number 1, and the Independence Fraternal Order of Police Auxiliary, Chief Brad Halsey and Chief Chris Soule, Major John Cato, Captain Troy Hanencrat and the entire Independence Missouri Police Department Color Guard and Honor Guard, Captain Matt Klein of the Sugar Creek Missouri Police Department who will be providing our bagpipe uh, Amazing Grace song later, and the director of the Harry S. Truman Presidential Library Kurt Graham, who at last minute due to the weather provided a facility for us indoors here, uh, which is very much appreciated. Uh, thank you all very much for your efforts uh, and this wonderful service, again, could not have been possible without you. I would also like to introduce some special guests that we are very honored to have joining us today. First, the survivors of our fallen officers for whom we, we gather today to remember and honor. The Foster family, the Kraxner family, the Anka family, the Novak family. Also distinguished guests, the mayor of Sugar Creek, Missouri, the Honorable Mike Larson, the mayor of Independence, Missouri, the Honorable Eileen Weir, Independence City Council members, Karen DeLucci and John Perkins, Independence City Manager, Zach Walker, Independence Assistant City Manager, Mark Randall, Independence Missouri Police Chief Brad Halsey, Sugar Creek Missouri Police Chief Chris Soule, Independence Missouri Fire Chief John Green. I'm sure I probably left out some out there who uh, filed in late that I didn't get a chance to see. So thank you all very much for being here. Your presence truly is an honor uh, to us and to the surviving families. As you all know, we've been dealing with the recent shooting of one of our own, Officer Tom Wagstaff. It gives me great pleasure to announce to you today that as Officer Wagstaff continues his recovery, he and his family are joining us today via Facebook Live. At the back of the auditorium is a camera, so we're dipping into our wonderful social media uh, ventures here. So there is some ad-libbing that'll be done as we uh, accommodate the new venue inside as we would plan for outside. Um, but knowing how much uh, Officer Wagstaff means to all of us, if you would please indulge me in turn and face the camera located at the back. And would you please join me in a round of applause encouraging Officer Wagstaff in his continued recovery. Thank you all very much. I know you don't want the attention wags as you're up there, uh, probably shaking your head right now, but uh, we want you to know that the entire community is supporting you and we're all praying for you and your family. 
The reason we gather here every year is to remember with solemn reverence the ultimate sacrifice that these seven officers made for all of us. The Bible teaches us in John chapter 15, verse 13, that greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That is the sacrifice that these seven men and more than 21,000 other brave men and women have made to stand up to evil. It is this sacrifice that defines not only the heroic nature in which they died, but more importantly, how they lived. In reflecting on these remarks today, I remembered words that I spoke almost a year ago while describing law enforcement officers everywhere, and they seemed a fitting tribute not only to our fallen brothers and sisters, but to those they left behind. See, these brave men and women have sworn to hold the line that separates good from evil, justice from injustice, and peace from anarchy. This is the thin blue line, a line that is not eroded by the acts of cowards or criminals alike, this line is stronger than any fortress, and it is unwavering in its pursuit of righteousness. But make no mistake about it, every time an officer loses their life defending this line, a piece of all of us dies with them. Be that as it may, we are stronger today than ever before. We stand resolved to defend that line each and every day, knowing that we may have to make the ultimate sacrifice. We say goodbye to our family before each shift, realizing that we may never walk back through that door. Our loved ones stay behind, anxiously counting down the time until we return, praying that they never hear that dreaded knock at the door. Today, we remember the sacrifice of these heroes and their families. It is you, the survivors, which carry the greatest burden. But take comfort in knowing that you do not carry this burden alone. Behind each and every one of you stands a line, a thin blue line of over 900,000 men and women ready and willing with open arms to share that burden and carry you forward. Thank you for being here today. Your continued presence is both an honor and an inspiration to all of us that continue to serve. May God bless you and your families and law enforcement officers everywhere. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce the Independence Missouri Chief of Police, Brad Halsey. Thank you, Adam. The reason I like Adam doing it, he covers so much better than I could have anyway. So, you know, the second thing is you think I just print my, my uh, notes here a little bit bigger instead of using glasses, but I'm at that age. So, <laughs> you know, today with the, uh, the weather, it obviously threw a, a huge curveball. Um, a lot of hours of preparation have been taken prior to today to make this event outside. Um, so we're just gonna call it not a dry run, but we'll just say it's a wet run for next year. Um, again, there's a lot of people put a lot of time in this, so just wanna thank them first and foremost. Um, also wanna extend my appreciation to Mr. Graham and the Truman Library staff for allowing us to hold this significant event here at the Truman Library. Although this is a change in our tradition, as everybody knows, um, I believe that this, you know, holding the ceremony here the prominence of this location is very fitting in remembering those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and to the men and women who serve in law enforcement today. Uh, to everyone here today, thank you for taking the time to pay your respects to the fallen heroes and to the men and women who serve the community proudly. Also, I want to welcome and thank the family and friends of the fallen heroes being recognized today. I want to let the family know that I know today is always tough. You know, I've talked to uh, family members and this is always a tough time of the year because it brings up different memories and that's difficult but I think um, you just need to know that uh, we remember your loved ones every day um, I, I promise you in law enforcement we think about that when we go home and we know where you know the men and women are out in the field I should say not me anymore I can't really say that but we think about your family members and friends every day um, and you're always going to be a part of a family. You need to know that as well. I, I had an opportunity to speak to a couple of the Independence family members that, that lost, um, lost officers in the line of duty, uh, the Crash and family, and uh, Debbie Foster I know is here. Um, so again, thank you for taking the time to come out here. I also want to recognize all IPD personnel. Commission, civilian, it doesn't matter. We're all a team. It takes all of us to do the job. So I want to I give you my thanks today for doing what you do day in and day out. 
I say it time and time again how proud I am to be a part of such a great team and a family, and I mean that. Uh, I'd be dismissed. I know Adam again did a great job. I think one that, uh, if you did mention Adam, I apologize, but uh, FOPA, I know that you guys had a big part of this. Thank you for your your efforts, not only during this event, but um, during Tom Wagstaff's incident as well. You know, I'm going to kind of get to that at the very end here. And, you know, I joked about the lights going out. I didn't have to speak, so I don't know if that was on cue or, or what, but so I'm going to keep pushing here. Um, again, I just want to thank the men and women wearing the uniform. Uh, your relentless pursuit and courage in keeping us safe. And uh, to, to, to me and everybody, you're, you're my hero. Um, and you're everybody's hero, so thanks for what you do. Uh, again, I know Independence Fire was brought up Sugar Creek PD. You know, we have a great relationship. I've been with the city for 24 years. Uh, I think this is always a, a very good program when we uh, do this together because we're so close in community. So I want to acknowledge Bob Shavers. Um, Bob's an inspiration to all of us as well. I guarantee you when I turn around, Bob's going to be smiling. <laughs> You know, that's what I love about Bob. When I think I'm having a hard day, I see Bob, and I ain't having a hard day. You know, Bob's smiling. Um, so thank you, Bob, for, for being a part of this again this year. Next, I want to thank the community and businesses. Um, you know, you guys only support us during times of tragedy, but you guys are there for us every day. Um, I think, you know, even before Tom's incident, I would tell you, when I first took the chief's job, um, I knew the support was there. That's why I took, that was one of the reasons I took the job. But, you know, the outpouring support just solidified that for me even. Um, and, and it's happened time and time again. You know, I can tell you story after story after story about just Tom's incident, but even before Tom and after Tom, I think it's important that we as the PD, the police department, the community, and the businesses, we have to maintain that good relationship because that's why we're here to serve and you're there to support us. So I could go on about that, but I won't. I know Luis handed me 350 cards, I think, that I hand signed, thank you notes, and I think that's just the tip of the iceberg uh, for when Tom was injured and the out, um, just all the support that we got. So that's pretty tremendous. Lastly, I hope live feed's still working because I want to speak to Tom. Wasn't expecting that one either. Um, you know, Tom and his wife Stacy, Alex and Jordan, they're just amazing, to be honest with you. Um, I know today's not about Tom, but Tom's part of why we're here today. It's the ultimate sacrifice, whether you, you are killed in the line of duty or seriously injured. So, you know, Tom's dedication and strength while fighting to get better, it's just, it's been a, not only an inspiration to me, but all, everybody you wear is uniform, I don't care if you're police, fire, ambulance, it doesn't matter. So keep pushing, Tom, keep working hard. Um, you know, I debated about making a joke here, I'm gonna go ahead and insert that joke. You know, I was gonna tell you, the car, patrol car's waiting for you, I know you wanna be back. Um, I want you to get back so Captain Tans can deny your days off again. <laughs> I don't know if Neil's here or not, but anyway, Tom, best, best, of, uh, best of wishes to you. Keep, keep pushing and keep fighting. You mean a lot to us. Uh, with that, I'm going to conclude, and I'm going to ask uh, Adam to come back up to the podium. Thank you. Just like Chief, see, I, I went off script already, so I, I apologize. But I would like to introduce and uh, welcome to the podium Chief Chris Soule of the Sugar Creek, Missouri Police Department. Hello, I am uh, Chris Soule. I've been with Sugar Creek for 22 years. Uh, I've worked with a lot of the officers here. Uh, like he said, we have a relationship like no other police departments I've ever seen. Uh, I think sometimes my guys try to go a little bit too far over into the south of them, but you know, they've really worked well together. Uh, we have our memorial, our gun range is the Crackstone Anka Memorial Gun Range that we all 
pair on, so we do work well together, and I thank you. Uh, I want to thank Independence Police Department and Chief Halsey for today's ceremony. As we gather here at the Library of President Truman, I am moved by a quote by him in May of 1945. We must work to bind up the wounds of a suffering world, to build an abiding peace, a peace rooted in justice and in law. It is with a heavy heart that we all gather here today to remember those officers that made the ultimate sacrifice protecting our community and our citizens. Each day, every day, men and women in law enforcement put themselves at risk to keep their fellow Americans safe and secure. Most return home every day and night to their loved ones, but some are called upon to make that ultimate sacrifice. It is a burden that every police officer accepts willingly. They know without their courage, there would be no security. And without their sacrifice, there would be no justice. I'd like to recite a poem that uh, means a lot to me. I've always had it in all my offices. And it's titled, The Final Inspection. The author is unknown. The policeman stood and faced his God, which must always come to pass. He hoped his shoes were shiny, just as brightly as his brass. Step forward now, policeman. Now shall I deal with you? You have always turned your other cheek to my church, have you been true? The policeman squared his shoulders and said, no, Lord, I guess I ain't, because those of us that carry the badge can't always be a saint. I've had to work most Sundays, and at times my talk was rough, and sometimes I've been violent because the streets are awful tough. But I never took a penny that wasn't mine to keep, though I worked a lot of overtime when bills got just too steep. And I never passed a cry for help, though at times I shook with fear, and sometimes, God forgive me, I've wept unmanly tears. I know I don't deserve a place among the people here. They never wanted me around except to calm their fear. If you have a place for me here, Lord, it needn't be so grand. I never expected or had too much, but if you don't, I'll understand. There was a silence all around the throne where all the saints had often throbbed as the policeman waited quietly for the judgment of his God. Step forward now, policeman. You've borne your burdens well. Come walk a beat on Heaven Street. You've done your time in hell. Again, thank you all for attending today. Thank you, Chief Soul. At this time, I would like to invite Mayor Eileen Weir of Independence, Missouri to come forward and present a proclamation on behalf of the city. And I'd also like to invite Chief Halsey to come forward and receive that proclamation. Mayor. Thank you. I'm honored to be here today to present this proclamation on behalf of the City of Independence. Whereas the Congress of the United States of America has designated May 15th of each year to be Police Memorial Day. And whereas our law enforcement officers are the guardians of life and property, defenders of the individual right to be free individuals and warriors in the battle against crime, and whereas our community desires to honor the valor, service, and dedication of its own police officers, and whereas the city of Independence has seen five officers killed in the line of duty, Henry Bugler, June 13, 1866, John Swearingen, January 16, 1884. George Barton, January 26, 1922. David Kraxner, October 31, 1966. And Terry Foster, March 17, 2001. And whereas also a part of the Independence Missouri Lodge No. 1 Fraternal Order of Police, the city of Sugar Creek has seen two officers killed in the line of duty. Mike Anka, February 5th, 1968, and Anthony Novak, September 11th, 1969. Now therefore, I, Eileen N. Weir, the Mayor of the City of Independence, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the City of Independence, do hereby proclaim May 17th, 2017, as Police Memorial Day. Thank you, Mayor Weir, and thank you to the city for that proclamation. After serving the city of Independence for 35 years, 
Major Terry Story will retire from service at the end of this month. It is my honor to ask him to come forward today and deliver our keynote address. Major. I stand before you a blessed man. I have been allowed to work in a job I love for 34 years in a city that I grew up in. You see, I'm an independence homeboy. I've been, went to school in Bryan grade school, junior, William Christman Junior High and William Christman High School. As my duties as a police officer, I've been allowed to speak and shake hands with presidents with dignitaries and famous people. As part of my duties, I've been allowed to travel across the country from coast to coast, whether it be testifying in cases or being trained in different locations. God has protected me for 34 years. I'm not too bad a shape, least wear anyways. Uh, I have some hearing loss. My wife claims that I just ignore her but I think it's due mostly to gunshots and sirens, which is true. And a lot of you might have that same problem. I'd like to recognize my wife. She put up with me for most of those 34 years, and I thank her. I feel honored and humbled to be in front of you, many of you who I care so much about, in this historic place, home of President Truman. When I was in junior high school, many times I would be on the school bus traveling to junior high school, and I would see President Truman walking on the sidewalk in front of his home. I saw him so much, it didn't mean much to me. I wish now I would have got off the bus and talked to him. I stood on the bridge that cold December day in 1972 when Harry Truman passed away and they had his funeral, and I will never forget that. I'm an old school guy, that's why I got my hat on. When I started, and some of you are old school guys in here, I recognize you, we wore hats. You got out of your car, you put your hat on. I know that's kind of hard to believe. When it turned to be September 15th, you went to long sleeve shirts and ties. And if you got out of the car without your tie on, you got disciplined for it. I don't know if Dan Cummings is here or not, but he got disciplined a lot for that. <laughs> April 15th, you went to short sleeves. You went to short sleeves, no matter how cold it was or not. We were issued 38 caliber revolvers with a strap across the holster. So when you got in a foot chase, you had to hang on to your gun or else you'd lose it, and that happened. So after the foot chase, we'd have to go back and find our guns. Thank God we got something now that would protect that from happening. The radios, the portable radios that we have were as thick as a brick, and you didn't have anything to hold them, you just kept them in your back pocket. Uh, and of course, the Louisville sluggers that they issued us, the round ones that were this long, they took those away from us and gave us black, little black round ones that, that broke when you used them, so. In 1982, it was during the energy crisis, and the vehicles, police vehicles we had were Ford Fairmounts, four doors, and uh, there were multiple colors, from black all the way down to, and Gordon would remember. There was one that was beige pink, unbelievable, and I was a rookie, so guess which vehicle I drove? <laughs> It didn't help my ego much. <laughs> it was a time when you turned on the lights to the vehicle, and it was a toggle underneath the dashboard, and that was the overhead red lights, and then, of course, the siren. And back then, you wrote hip reports by hand using black ink. To this day, I can't write anything with blue ink. When you wrote reports, you gave them to your sergeant, your sergeant would review them, and if there were too many mistakes, they got torn up in front of your eyes, and you had to write them again. But it made me a better police officer because I wrote a pretty good report after that. And I think those people like Sergeant Hageman who tore up my reports and I will never forget. Before going any farther, and we've mentioned it already once, you cannot know how much we care for Officer Wagstaff, Tom Wagstaff. And I am so thankful and amazed at his recovery. 
and I hope he continues, and I hope that you will pray for him and his family and continue to do so. Another thing that I am so thankful for is the citizens of this city, the support that, that is given to us every day. And not only the city of Independence, but the metropolitan area, these different types of outings that they have to raise money for his family. If you ever think that the city doesn't support you, you should know that now. I tell this story many times before this particular incident, back when a lot of problems we were having with law enforcement people was. I, you go into our beloved Quick Trip to get your drink, of course, and I would stop every morning on my way to work at the one on 291, and I go in to get a cup of coffee and I'm taking it to the desk and, and to pay for it. Or, and they give it to us actually, but I think I had a donut too. And <laughs> there was a young man there and he said, let me get that for you. I go, no, it's okay, I appreciate that, thank you so much. He goes, no, I insist, I insist. So he opens up his billfold and I'm looking and watching and he has a traffic ticket in his billfold. He paid for my, my breakfast and still had a traffic ticket, so I thought that was pretty amazing. <laughs> I don't know about you, a lot of you officers now, I know that when you go in someplace, I, I recently went to Chipotle's and stood in line in my uniform, and before I could get there, I've had three people offer to buy my dinner, and when I got to that, finally to pay for it, somebody had already paid for it. I, I just think that's so wonderful, and it means so much, and I'm sure it means a lot to you, and I'm sure that's happened to a lot of you. There were 132 officers killed in the line of duty in this country last year. That's up eight from 2015. At least let's not, for, let, let's, let's not forget about those that paid the ultimate sacrifice and those that died in the line of duty to protect us from crime. That thin blue line, I surely believe in that. One thing that we're going to do here shortly is formally recognize those seven officers that have given their lives for, for their cities in a few minutes, but I think we need to spend some time and talk a little bit about what happened to them and the circumstances involving them being killed on the line of duty. The first that we need to remember, in 1866, that was when the one year after the Civil War, Jailer Bugler was working in the jail at the time. Your family lived in the jail with you. So he had his four-year-old son along with his family there. Five riders came to the jail and demanded the release of two prisoners from the jail. Officer Bugler, during that confrontation, was shot and killed. Not only was he killed, but his four-year-old son was wounded. They never did identify or charge those that killed Jailer Bugler, but it is believed to be the Jesse James and Cole Younger gang. Those are criminals, not heroes. In 18, excuse me, I've lost my notes here. In 1884, the officer was killed because he was searching a prisoner, he was a chief of police, and he, as he was searching the pit, his prisoner, the gun fell out of his waistband, hit the floor, and discharged, shooting him, into the, shooting him in the stomach. He survived that for just a short time and passed away after, after that point. He was transported to the hospital where he passed away. The next day, the prisoner that, that he was searching was released because he was only there because he was charged with public intoxication. The next officer died in 1922. He was on routine patrol south of the city on foot. At that time, he came across a suspicious person armed. He, com he confronted that person and that person shot and killed him. That person was taken, the officer was taken to the Independent Sanitarium 
and shortly thereafter, the suspect ran to the square where he was confronted again and a gunfire erupted and he was shot and killed at that location. In 1966, October 31st, <coughs> Lieutenant Dave Kraxner made a felony car check at 40 and Chrysler. While he was there, he was able to remember a license plate because he had a very good memory, it's been told. He remembered the license plate of a stolen vehicle, and the driver of that vehicle had escaped from federal custody in St. Louis, Missouri. And while he was there, he escaped and shot a federal agent and then responded to Kansas City area where he stole another car. And that person that, was, that uh, owned that vehicle was also shot and killed, but the case was never made against the person that killed him. Lieutenant Kraxner stopped the vehicle, and upon that time getting out of his vehicle, the suspect shot him and wounded him, and he fell to the ground. Lieutenant Kraxner was able to return fire and wounded the suspect at that time. He then walked up the suspect and executed Lieutenant Kraxner as he laid on the ground. That was 50 years ago in 2016, just last October. The suspect in this case, and I won't mention his name because he doesn't deserve it, is still in custody and he's 75 years old. Last fall, I, I went to the parole hearing for this subject and he was held in custody for five more years. We'll make him 80 before he's allowed to request parole again. So I say he stays in there the rest of his life like he pled to. See, he pled for he pled guilty to escape the death penalty because they were going to give him the death penalty. So he should remain there. We should not forget our Sugar Creek brothers. Chief Mike Conca in 1968, I'm sorry, Terry Foster, Officer Terry Foster was killed March 17, 2001. He was a friend of mine. He had been riding the wagon on day shift and he went to evening shifts so he can get his, his retirement hire. So he went to patrol and was riding a district on midnights. If you went to midnights, you got 5% raise. He was responding on a call, a disturbance call involving adult male. The male was uh, living with his elderly parents. And at that point, it was a second time that, or several times he and Terry, Officer Foster had been there. When he was arrived, he contacted the adult in the upstairs bedroom. He'd been there before and thought he could talk to the person and talk him down to get him some more mental help. Well, during that conversation, the person shot several times Officer Foster. The, the assisting officers were able to drag him from the, the residence and the suspect caught the house on fire and burned up and was killed. Our Sugar Creek officers that were killed was Officer Mike Wonka, the grandfather of the Wonka brothers that are with us at our police department. This is an interesting story because he responded with Officer Anthony Bocchieri on an armed robbery that occurred at Cross's Lounge. When he arrived, or when the suspect was there, he forced the patrons into the basement of the, of the the business. A waitress was able to call police and knew who the suspect was. He uh, contacted the suspect and named him and the chief Anka and Officer Bocari knew who he was. Officer Bocari arrived on the scene first, contacted the individual and was disarmed by him. Uh, chief Anka arrived shortly thereafter and he also was disarmed. Both officers were forced to the inside, to the basement of the residence. At that time, the suspect shot Officer Bocari in the chest, and he lived. He, he also shot the Anka twice, which caused him to die. He was uh, convicted of, of that crime. Tony Novak died in 1969. He was fighting a prisoner 
and after the incident, he was killed from a massive heart attack. I mentioned those officers' names too, because he's out. I'd like to talk a little bit now about a challenge to you as, a, as fellow officers. There are four things that I would like to tell you and challenge you. The first one being to follow policy and procedure of this police department. We have policies and procedure to protect us, and I would like for you to do that. We also, second challenge, do not become complacent. Never, never think that nothing's going to happen because it will. I, the third is, oh, okay. <laughs> the third of this, of my challenge is to worry about your health, take care of your health. The stress of the job causes so much problem with us, and we need to make sure that that health is taken care of. And finally, the fourth challenge is I. I would like for the police department that are working now to take promotional tests. Take those tests because we need to reply upon officers within the ranks to take promotional tests because we need that leadership within. And I challenge you to do that. Thank you today for allowing me to speak to you. And I also would like the uh, I'd like for you to know that I am thankful for 34 years of service and allowed to work for this police department. Thank you. I found my notes. <laughs> Thank you, Major Story. Those were some very powerful words. And, uh, very good challenges for all of us to abide by. Thank you, sir. At this time, uh, I ask the Van Horn Varsity Concert Choir to come forward. They're gonna line the aisles over here and perform their rendition of Don't Be Afraid. Uh, as we are getting ready for our end of the school year, really 
thank you all very much, and especially to all the soloists. I know how that is not very easy to do. So I understand that most of you, if not all of you, are seniors as you guys leave, and uh, I have no doubt that you all have some bright futures ahead of you. So thank you very much for that. At this time, I would ask that Chief Brad Halsey and Officer Bob Shavers accompany me and Major Terry Story as we place the memorial wreath. Now we will begin our roll call of heroes. As we do so, we ask that the escorts and the family member placing the rows would line up in the aisle to my left. From the Independence Missouri Police Department, Henry Bugler, end of watch, June 13th, 1866. John Swearingen, end of watch, January 16th, 1884. George Barton, end of watch, January 26th, 1922. Lieutenant David Kraxner, end of watch, October 31st, 1966. And Officer Terry Foster, end of watch, March 17th, 2001. Continuing the roll call of heroes from the Sugar Creek, Missouri Police Department, Chief Chris Soule. Chief Mike Onka, end of watch, February 5th, 1968. Chief Anthony Novak, end of watch, September 18th, 
I'd ask that you join me in a moment of silence honoring all of our seven men that have played the ultimate sacrifice and their families. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask Independence Police Department Chaplain Mike Josue to come forward and deliver the benediction. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us never to forget Never forget those fallen heroes who paid the ultimate sacrifice to serve and protect. Those police officers who gave the last full measure of devotion for community and country. Those fallen heroes that gave all of their tomorrows so that we may be secure today. Never has so much been owed by so many to so few. To those heroic few who wore law enforcement blue, we give praise this day. May their memory always burn bright. May their sacrifice always be held sacred. May their heroism always be heralded. And as we leave this historic place and your holy presence, we ask your shield of protection to surround those who stand in harm's way today to protect and serve. Bless them, keep them, make your face to shine upon them, now and always. In the name of your kingdom, by your power, and for your glory, we pray, amen. All right, now we're gonna do something just a little bit different. Um, this is more for Wags and his family. Uh, this is your opportunity to grab one of those crunch bars or get Stacy to get you some M&Ms or something. We're gonna shut off the feed in here and our color guard and honor guard that have practiced endlessly for the last uh, several months have a ceremony outside. It is not raining, so uh, the weather has broke for now. So we're gonna retire outside. We'll pick up the live stream out there once we get there. I'd ask everybody to remain seated for now. Deputy Chief Jarnigan, sir, if you would lead all of our commission personnel out and to take their formation. <laughs> <laughs> 